What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Magpie. The Magpie is a 3D printed flywheeler that uses exclusively half-length darts. External overview of the Magpie, starting up at the front, there's no in-strike barrel lug. Up top, we have our iron sights right here and here, but no tactical rail at all. Moving back to the loading system, this is a cylinder-fed blaster. You can load the cylinder when it's in place using the two loading ports right here and here, which would allow you to lower the blaster and just push in a dart like that. There are two loading ports and a capacity of six darts, so reloading the Magpie is pretty quick. But you can also release the cylinder from the blaster with this lever here which allows the cylinder to pop out like that. And once it's open, you can pull the cylinder completely off and reload a preloaded one very quickly if you want to. However, this component, along with most of the blaster, is 3D printed, and it's a pretty thin, weak component. So if you're running around getting shot at, I would not recommend you open this up because that's an accident waiting to happen. But you can quickly switch out cylinders if you want to. Again, the capacity is six darts, and it only works with half-length darts. This blaster is not compatible with full-length Nerf Elite darts. Moving on, up here we have a hammer. This is not a functional hammer, as this is not a hammer action blaster. But when you fire, it does move back and forth for the cosmetics. Now down to the trigger. This has a very unique trigger pull. It's not like any other blaster I've used. It has a very heavy, gritty, sort of unsmooth trigger pull in my opinion. But when you pull on the trigger, you're activating the flywheels, rotating the cylinder, and injecting a dart, all with that one trigger pull. There's no rev switch, there's no on-off switch. To activate the flywheels, you're pulling the primary trigger. The trigger pull is very picky. It requires a lot of dexterity and a lot of attention to make sure you're doing it correctly. It's not idiot proof at all. It's really not something you want to run hard and fast in a battle condition. But the trigger system works just fine when you're putting a lot of attention into your dexterity to make sure you're doing it just as it needs to be done. And now down to the grip. This is a unique grip because it feels more like a wheel gun than a standard semi-auto pistol. That being said, it's a pretty comfortable grip. I'd say this is on the slightly larger side. So if you're a regular size or a larger size human, I think your hand will fit this blaster very well. It's a good ergonomic design. It holds very well in the hand. Overall, this blaster holds really well in the hand. It's very comfortable, fun to play with. There's no sling or lanyard mount at the bottom, but this is actually where you load in the battery. So you take out the screw, you slide off the cover, which reveals your LiPo battery housing. It's wired up with an XT60 connector and requires a 3S LiPo battery. And there's enough room in there to comfortably put the battery, but there's not excessive space to make it wobble around or anything. As I shake this blaster, the battery is completely motionless, which is a good thing. The battery compartment is an appropriate size. That is an external overview of the Magpie. Now I'll show you firing. Shooting Adventure Force half-length darts. So operating the Magpie is a pretty mixed experience for me. First, handling and using the blaster is a blast. The blaster holds phenomenally in the hands. I think it's really comfortable. It looks stellar. And it's really cool to be able to rear load, which is a fun experience, emotionally speaking, to pop out the cylinder. It's really cool. It's fun. So from that perspective, it's a really fun blaster to have your hands on. It's like a model or a prop. But when it comes to actually shooting the Magpie, I did not really enjoy the experience. The trigger system is just really finicky. It demands all of your attention go into it instead of whatever you're shooting at. And if you throw all of your attention into the the trigger mechanism so when you're shooting your whole mind is just on smoothly pulling the trigger it will technically work but the second you start going a little faster out of rhythm or you're just trying to shoot like in a battle condition it really breaks down it seizes it jumps darts it doesn't feed consistently so essentially it works in testing conditions but this blaster is not something that i would bring into an actual nerf battle and the darts shoot pretty hard out on the muzzle but a lot of them flip around and sort of flutter and they don't actually shoot straight so i found hitting what i was aiming at to be very difficult using the magpie but to compare this blaster to others i put it up on my chronograph and achieved an average velocity of 120 feet per second shooting Adventure Force half-length darts, which is super fast for any blaster, but it's really, really fast for a tiny little pistol like this that's very impressive. That is the objective information I can provide on the Magpie, now to my personal opinion. The Magpie came really close to being an exceptional blaster, but I think it really falls short in performance, specifically the trigger mechanism and the smoothness of the trigger mechanism. It just requires too much attention. It, it's kind of not fun to have to pay that much attention to make it work smoothly. This is largely personal preference, but when I'm playing Nerf, I like to throw my attention completely at my target, completely at my opponent. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm running on autopilot. I'm running on muscle memory. I don't want to have to put this much attention into a blaster. I want to be thinking completely about my opponent. And with the Magpie, you simply can't do that. You have to put way too much effort into pulling the trigger smoothly in exactly the way it needs to be done. To the point where, in my opinion, it really diminishes the play experience. It's not as much fun to use this blaster for prolonged periods of time. So as a performance-based blaster, I think it falls short. But as more of a gimmicky toy to elicit a particular emotional response 
sense when you're plinking around the house, not necessarily in a competitive environment, the Magpie is pretty fun. The cosmetics of this thing are just unbelievable. I think it looks so cool. That's obviously subjective, but it also holds extremely well in the hands. It's a very fun blaster to have your hands on. You just want to play with it. You want to explore it. You want to load it. You just want to play with it. It's just a nice thing to have in your hands. It's a cool prop. But I personally will not be using the Magpie in any Nerf Wars or anytime I'm competitively trying to put foam on a target. It's not really optimized for that, and I don't think it does a very good job at that. So now to the question, to buy or not to buy. Like I said, if you're a performance-oriented nerfer trying to effectively fling foam, I don't think the Magpie is the right blaster for you. Shooting short darts, I think the Dart Zone Mark II would be a phenomenal choice. That shoots really hard, it shoots really accurate, and it works really, really quite well. And even though the chrono velocity is 120 feet per second, a lot of those darts will fly through the chrono and then immediately start fluttering, so you can't really hit what you're aiming at. This is a case where the chrono results don't actually reflect the performance of the blaster. So for the performance guys out there, I don't think the Magpie's right for you. I think there are better options out on the market right now. But if you're a prop guy, if you're a tinkerer, if you like to have things in your hands to play with them for the emotional response, not necessarily to effectively fling foam, but to just have fun. I know, it's a wild concept, bros, to have fun when you're playing with a toy. To not go after purely winning? To enjoy the experience? What is this? What is this? This is life! <laughs> but if that's you, the Magpie might be a great blaster for you. It holds exceptionally well in the hands. I'm not even a wheel gun guy, but this grip is phenomenal. It looks amazing. It's really fun to drop the blaster like this into rear load. I feel like a cowboy. I think I've talked about my fantasy of being a cowboy a little too much on my channel. But the emotional response of dropping a cylinder blaster and reloading is just fun. It's just fun. And this blaster is relatively small compared to other pistols, so you could actually fit this into quite a few holsters on the market, which for prop-oriented people might be a big deal for you. So that's a split opinion depending on what you're looking for out of a blaster like this. Hopefully I've laid out everything you need to make an educated purchase decision on the Magpie. If you'd like to buy one of these, check out Frontline Foam, a link in the description box below to purchase one. And thank you to Frontline Foam for sending this over for a review. I appreciate it. That concludes the review of the Magpie. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical. Cool.